Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the opportunity to speak this message today in which it is heavy upon my heart because I know it's heavy upon your heart. But I know, Father, I don't have the ability to do this on my own. I understand my limitations of the humanity and the flesh of who I am today. But greater is he that lives within us and that you give us the ability to declare and decree your words with an unction and an anointing. I ask for you to hide me behind the shadow of the cross that nobody would see me but only you. They would not remember my name and not even the name of this church, but they would remember the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Be glorified and Holy Spirit set us ablaze in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody say amen. And amen. Here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, America, you wanted a king without me. Now you have one. You have fallen for grace because you refuse to seek my face. So I'm giving you your heart's desire. A king that doesn't know me. A king that refuses to honor me. A king that speaks swelling words of self-praise. Who follows the gods of money fortune and fame but i tell you this day just as these things and those who pursue these gods shall taste and feel the fire of judgment and displeasure for alone i am the king of israel i alone am the chosen one i alone can fix that which is broken i alone am the way the truth and the life And I alone raise up kings and set them down. America, you have been fooled and snake bitten, bewitched, and now bewilderment will be your cup to drink. Choose this day, my church, who you will follow. The paganized prophets of Babylon who prophesy lies to you or follow and believe my true prophets who are bathed in my presence and clothed with my truth. The choice is yours. Choose wisely, for the coming days will increase with gross darkness and peril. Only those who know the truth will be, will be clearly see, they will clearly see the paths ahead of them that leads to victory. Powerful words. As always, take these to the Father and see what he would speak to your heart concerning them. And concerning the message this morning that I will be preaching to you this very day, this message that is on my heart from the Father is very pointed and will be very much so out there in a brash way, but it is not for shock value or because I like attention. I don't need attention. I'm married with children. I have enough attention. I have enough duties, assignments, and responsibilities. So what I'm saying today is not for that value or shock value. It is because the Holy Spirit has led this message to be preached and has laid it upon my heart in a very heavy way. As you know, some things were said by the President of the United States of America, in which I will reiterate here momentarily, to bring forth the message in which the Father has anointed me to speak about. And there are many that have already went to social media and put into the position of their ministries their comments and concerns concerning these things, which is their appointed time. I was not allowed to release anything on social media, though others had asked my opinion and what I thought. I had to brush it off and say, I'll see you Sunday. Because of the severity of the words and the severity of the hour, I was assigned for this day to speak about it. So my silence was not acceptance, nor was my silence cowardice. My silence was on purpose because this is the platform by which he wanted me to speak concerning this. As many know, in America, the president has said some very bizarre things 
not just a couple days ago, but for a long time. And as I begin this message, I want everybody to be reminded of the fact that on the first message of January of 2017, the Lord spoke prophetically through the lips of clay in this house and said that you did not elect a Reagan, you elected a pagan. I've said that, I have stood by that, I have preached it, I have preached this message faithfully for several years in the face of those who left me, who defunded me, who criticized me, who said all kinds of evil against me and this house because of their desire to have a king, for their desire to be fooled and to be bewitched by the paganized pastors and leaders of our nation. I am not saying that to bring anything towards me as attention. I am just reiterating facts that are historical, that we did not just get on this train at this particular junction. We've been speaking it prophetically from day one. And so the nation, meaning the Christian nation, the part of the nation that follows the mantras of the evangelical Muppets, began to get on the train and get on the wagon of hope and began to believe the false prophecies of such as Mark Taylor and others who mesmerized this nation like Howdy Doody did back in the 50s while the preachers were preaching revival. Howdy Doody was on television mesmerizing the people with strings, puppets, and so it happened again in 2017, 18, until this day, 2019. And so we preached and we continue to speak about what was taking place in our country and how that people were drinking the poison of deception and they were entering into the Babylonian beast system and they had no idea how far they had gotten because they would not look at facts. They looked at a person and persona. They looked at a campaign slogan and rhetoric. They looked towards those who were baptized in paganism to bring them to a certain light. How many all know the devil is an angel of light? And so we fought against it and preached against it. And this is not a message of a victory lap whatsoever. This is just a message of the Father's heart concerning where we are. But I have to reiterate history again to the critics and those that don't know how to spell when they write to me concerning why I preach what I preach and the way that I preach. I do not share with you the emails that I get of people who don't know what they're talking about. I don't tell you the totality of them because, number one, I'm not going to honor them and I'm not going to give the devil any ammunition or any praise. But I do tell you in passing that there are people who are deceived in the hour that we're living in. So I begin that by saying, here are some of the statements that were made by President Trump, Donald J. Trump, that are bizarre. These are the past 72 hours or so. First of all, he wanted to buy Greenland. Is anybody here today? Uh, wanted to buy Greenland. I don't know why we would want to buy Greenland, however you want to pronounce it. We got our problems in Chicago. We got problems in Atlanta. We got problems in Miami. We got problems down the road. We got problems all over. We don't need another problem. We can't even afford this nation. But just to begin the bizarre statements, we, we're going to buy Greenland, and Greenland said no, so we got mad. Then he went on to say, I think that any Jewish person that votes for a Democrat, I think he shows either a total lack of knowledge or a great disloyalty. Well, I did not know that our freedom was based on loyalty. I did not know that our ability to dwell together in unity in this democracy, if you will, in this perfect state, this perfect union, we had to agree with one ideology or philosophy of politics. But again, this is showing a sign of some 
issues dealing with the mind. The president's accusation that the majority of American Jews are either dumb or treacherous do not go over well, but anyways, he began to speak those things. Then a right-wing conspiracy theorist by the name of Wayne Allen Root, how many all familiar with some of these statements I'm going to read to you? I know there are some folks that don't know exactly what has happened. In fact, I was in the marketplace the other day and I was talking with a gentleman and I said, wow, I said, look at all these people here. I says, it looks like they are panic buying. He says, what's, what do you mean? What's going on? I haven't seen anything in the news. People just have their heads in other places, like a lot of your pastors. But Wayne Allen Root, he asserted that Jews in Israel regard Trump as something akin to the king of Israel or the second coming of God. First of all, they don't even believe in the second coming of God because to them, Jesus hasn't even showed up yet. So there's your first error. Then the president tweeted these words. Now, I want you to understand something. This is not a retweet of something that somebody said. This is a copy and paste and tweet of what somebody said concerning the president of the United States. So it was intentionally put into print. It was intentionally put into a Twitter feed that goes around the world. So please understand, this is not something that just happened to be retweeted. I quote, thank you, Wayne Allen, for the very nice words. President Trump is the, and then the, Mr. Root goes on and says, President Trump is the greatest president for Jews for the history of the world, not just America. He's the best president for Israel in the history of the world. And the Jewish people in Israel love him like he's the king of Israel. They love him like he's the second coming of God. But American Jews don't know him or like him. They don't even, as I continue the quote, they don't even know what they're doing or saying anymore. It makes no sense. But that's okay if he keeps doing what he's doing. He's good for all Jews, blacks, gays, and everyone. And importantly, he's good for everyone in America who wants a job. At the end of that tweet, the president put, wow. Are you here today? And this message that I'm preaching to you and the reason why I'm taking my time to lay the groundwork for you is because this is not a tweet that came from somebody else. It is a tweet that is done by the President of the United States who took this statements and added wow to it. And thank you for the very nice words. So if you surmise it, the President of the United States is taking credit for being the King of Israel and the second coming of God. And that's a fact. And I don't care how you twist it. I don't care how you manipulate it. I don't care how the talking heads try to put it into context. There is no context, but what is contextually true, and that's what I just told you. So during the Wednesday afternoon conference, some of you all saw the video where he spoke about his battle with China, the trade war right now that is bringing us down as a nation, by the way, is infuriating our farmers is assault, is assault, uh, insulting our steel workers, our auto industry, from books to you name it, we're seeing an increase. He said this, he said that he was the one that was chosen, watch this, the chosen one to fight against China. How many of all took these, heard these words and saw the illustration where he looked towards heaven and he made that assumption. Now, I will say a few more words about this then I will bring you to what the Lord spoke to me concerning this because I specifically asked the Father, what do you want to say concerning this? People all across the Christian world here in America have been silenced. I've only found a few articles of a few people 
who said anything concerning this, and it was watered down. I found a few prophetic people whom you would be confident in knowing that they spoke up. In other words, those are the ones that you know are hearing from the Lord. But there were very few within our nation that had anything to say concerning this. There was an interview with the Christian Broadcast Network political reporter David Brody. And he said this, the criticism of the president is showmanship. It's all being overblown. He said that they didn't really matter, that the evangelical church is not concerned with these words because they're just overblown. Well, I want to serve David Brody and all of the evangelical Muppets that are out there today that these words matter to the throne of God. They matter to the heart of God and they matter to the integrity of the character of the word of God. And I'm going to preach this message to you concerning those things. If you didn't like me then, you're not going to like me today. And if we have to depart from one another, then go ahead and pack your stuff because I'm going to preach the truth to you. The title of this message is called Belshazzar. Belshazzar. I do not speak that in a way to be harmful to anybody. I am speaking it in direct result of the passion that is in my heart concerning the word of God and the God of the word. And I love everybody and I want everybody to love me and I want to be your friend. But if you're going to take a flag, if you're going to take a political party, if you're going to take a political entity and rise it above God, then you and I will have problems down the road together. And you, my friend, have been drunk by the power of deception. Bel Shazar, Daniel chapter 5. Would you go there with me this morning? And I will interject some other statements that have been made recently by this false Christian in the White House. Let me repeat that. It didn't sound like anybody heard me. Maybe the microphone was off. The remarks that were made by this false Christian in the White House. Daniel chapter 5. Let me give you a little bit of background about this whole situation of Belshazzar. His name means protected by Baal. Protect the king. It also has an indication in touch of the word fire in there, but Belshazzar being protected by Baal, protect the king. And he was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And I want you to write down in your notes, if you're taking notes before you need some Pepto, that sin is generational. That there is a generational curse that can be upon a people, upon a family heritage, upon a political system. Even an office can have a generational curse upon it that when the next person sits down in the seat, if they're not clean, then that strong man and that stronghold and that generational spirit can rest upon them. And that is why that there must be a cleansing every time an administration is changed, a cleansing of a land, a cleansing of a people, when there's a new move towards God. And there was no cleansing in this White House. There was no cleansing of the seat of authority. There was no repentance of the sins of the past. There was only a continuation of the debaucheries and a deception, and that is a fact. I do not have time to re-educate people who just got on this channel and on this line of thinking, but we've been preaching it for many years. And so Belshazzar is now the king because his granddaddy 
Nebuchadnezzar and the son of Nebuchadnezzar were gone. And now it was time for Belshazzar. Go to verse 1 and read with me. Belshazzar, the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords, and he drank wine before the thousand. If you do some research of history of kings, they didn't party with everybody. When kings would party, they usually would have their nobles and a few righteous folks and some military commanders and captains and governors and concubines and a few others that would surround him. But here it says he began to throw a feast with the thousands. He brought in people around him because he was making boast of his ability and his majesty and his authority. Be careful of somebody who always wants a crowd. Be careful of somebody who always wants a camera and a microphone. Be careful of somebody who always wants attention, always tweeting, always telling people, look at me, look at me. Because a humble spirit does not do that. A humble person, a humble man, a humble woman does not look for attention. Attention happens to find them because promotion comes from the Lord. Narcissism is in our country today, and we have a king of narcissism that is sitting in the throne of Washington, D.C., who wants to be in power and wants to be a dictator and a despot. It is the same spirit that was on Belshazzar. Now, those things and words will offend people today, and good. I'm glad because you are the ones that need to be healed of your ignorance and your false support, not understanding the word of God. You say, man, pastor, that's really harsh today. Well, I'm at the end of it. I'm done. I'm done being polite. I am finished being polite when you mock my God and the God of the word, when you begin to mock Christianity, when you begin to take upon yourselves titles that do not belong to mere flesh and blood. I've had enough. And if you can't see this by now, then you are deceived. If you don't understand this by now, then you are completely out of line. Are you still in verse 1? As you can tell by my tone of voice, I'm being very nice today. But do not let that fool you. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to the thousands of his lords, and he drank wine before the thousand. So he's partying down with folks that love him. He's opening up the entertainment of his life with those to whom will support him and lift him up and will say, wow, king, you were something else. Wow, you are amazing. But what's incredible about this story is that Cyrus was on the outside of Babylon with his troops and they had besieged Babylon. They were getting ready to divert the water and make them able to walk upon the dry ground and the gate was unlocked from within if you know the story and they were going to storm Belshazzar in Babylon but everybody was drinking and partying and acting like there was no problem and the enemy was at the gate. The enemy was at the door. The enemy was showing his warfare and his power and his ability, but they were partying inside the palace with the great one. And that's happening in America today. We're partying down in the fake church. We're partying down in the plastic church. We're partying down in the Babylonian church. We're partying down, down the road from here, acting like nothing's going on, acting like we're not invoking our enemies. I want you to know something that China and Russia and the foreign entities that hate our guts are surrounding our nation. They're surrounding our nation with technology. They're surrounding our nation with warfare war machines. They are surrounding our nations with financial decisions that will decapitate us. And our king, Belshazzar, is playing into their hands and the church is singing the praises, kumbaya, kumbaya, my Lord, while the enemy is at the gate. 
The gate was unlocked from the inside because God always has a way to bring humility. God always has a way to bring a person down. God always has a way to deal with somebody who exalts themselves against the knowledge of God. God always has a way of bringing judgment. Don't you misunderstand the grace of God. Don't you misunderstand this period of life that we're living in. Don't misunderstand because somebody gets away for a little season that they're going to go scot-free. Every man and every woman will see the judge. Every man and woman will stand before God naked and everything that you've ever done will be revealed if it's not covered in the blood. You better get covered in the blood. You better get your sins right. You better get your sins right with God. You say, how do you do that? You go to him in mercy and say, God, forgive me. Forgive me of everything that I've ever done. Forgive me for the words, the thoughts, the deeds. Forgive me, Lord. And you exalt that mighty name because every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of who he is. And Belshazzar did not know. The reality of the totality of the judgment that awaited him, even though he saw the armies, and it is the same concept of the American church. You hear of the armament of our enemies increasing in technology. They're increasing in power. They're increasing in posture. They're increasing in all these different avenues of attack. But we sit back and we drink with the king. We sit back and we get drunk with the king. And we just say, oh, we're not worried about it. Pal Jezar, he's going to take care of us. This king is going to take care of us. The king of Babylon will take care of us. Belshazzar, and we trust. Even Israel foolishly is putting their trust in this nation, in this government, and in this president, comparing him to Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus and other entities who prove to be failures. Only God can stand watch over Israel. I appreciate the accomplishments of military might but not a thimbleful of the military could touch the awesomeness of God. Our God is an awesome God, and he is the one that stays awake and watches over Israel. We're foolish to think that by the power of military might, we stand day and night against the enemies of our soul. For if the enemy of our soul, the devil, will be released with just a portion of the power that's been granted to him, we could not even stand. You don't believe me? Look at the book of Revelation and see the judgments of God and see the anger of the serpent. See the great battle and see how much destruction comes to this world. No, the church is parting with Belshazzar. The church is with Belshazzar and thinking that this is the answer and this is the way and we're going to escape all of these things and we're going to ride in a cloud of glory. You've been bitten by the snake of deception, but bewilderment is coming your way. Verse 2. Belshazzar, whiles he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, and that king and the princess and his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, the true illustration in the Hebrew of that particular statement means that when the wine began to touch his body and he began to become drunk. The problem with pride is pride will make you drunk to the reality of everything around you. Pride will make you drunk to the real strength that you do not possess. Pride will make you think you're better looking than anybody in the room. Pride will make you think you're stronger than anybody in the room. Pride will make you think you're smarter than anybody in the room. Pride will make you say things that make you look the dumbest in the room. So Belshazzar began to drink 
and the wine began to fill him and he began to be prideful. He began to talk about what he had done, his great exploits and his powers and his victories. All along, the enemy was outside, but it didn't matter what was happening on the outside. All that mattered was happening in the inside. And that is the problem with the human heart and that is the problem with the American mindset. We don't care what's going on in China. We don't care what Russia was doing. We don't care what's happening in this part of the world. All we care about is the party that is happening here in our lives and in our churches with our king, Belshazzar. And that will be your downfall because you are drunk just as he is. I'm preaching better than you're staring at me today, but it is a reality of where we are because all we care about is self. We care about our stuff. We care about the economy per se. When the reality is our economy is trashing itself purposely. Partial judgment and partial manipulation of man by plan. See, when most folks don't understand that this president is the fall guy, this entire economy will wrap it around his neck and with every Christian as well. You still forget that we're in the last days. You still forget the end and what the Bible says, how that spirit of Antichrist will rise up and how the person of Antichrist will rise up in the last days. And no, Donald Trump is not the Antichrist. Folks better spend more time finding out who the Christ is. You need to spend more time finding out who Jesus is and quit worrying about the Antichrist. Don't worry, you'll know who it is. He comes with a name tag. I'm not looking for that. I'm not spending my every waking moment researching that. I'm looking for Jesus. I'm looking for the true, transparent, authentic Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm looking to live like him. I'm looking to talk like him. I'm looking to be like him. I'm looking for the fruit of the spirit to be in my life and show forth the world that you can live right in a crooked, destroyed world. No, don't have my head in some theological, eschatological type of book. Eschatology. I just had to say that because we have so many people that are chasing this. You better stay focused on what you're going to do for your family when he shows up. You better be focused on how you're going to spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ and get empowered by the Holy Ghost so that you don't fall and you don't get fooled and take the mark of the beast. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Some folks don't have any idea what I'm speaking of, but I'm telling you people are out chasing this. I'm not spending my time on that. Paul told us over thousands of years ago that the spirit of Antichrist already is on the earth. That's all I need to know. But I want to know who Jesus is. I want to know who Jesus is in you. I want to know how you feel. I want to know, are you going to support a political entity that blasphemies God and GDs his name? Or are you going to serve the King of kings and Lord of lords? Are you going to serve in righteousness? I've told you, this system is broken and ain't nobody going to fix it. Nobody. No, I'm, I'm preaching good. I feel good today. Belshazzar, when he tasted the wine, that's the problem. We got wine in our mouth. We got wine in our breath. We got the party favors going on in our bodies. Our systems are intoxicated with political entities. We're intoxicated with the talking heads of all these television programs telling you how to think, warping your spiritual mind. I don't care if it's CNN, Fox News. It don't make a difference who it is. It warps the mind of Christianity. And you have these kind of guys like from CBN telling us, oh no, it's just your figment of imagination. It didn't really say that. It didn't really take place that way. Oh no, that's just sarcasm and just having a good time. It's what they said about the Titanic. It can't sink. It's impossible. It's been built by the best. The most money has been put in this. The greatest achievement of humanity and the ability of industry. Does anybody know the rest of the story of the Titanic? Don't you put your trust in anything that man says. Put your trust in the word of God. 
silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple. So when he became drunk, he began talking about his exploits, which I will prove to you momentarily. And he was talking about how great and the victories. And to show forth his victories, he went and had them grab the very things that were stolen from the temple of God by his granddaddy. I told you generational curses on this nation, generational curses on our politicians, generational curses in the White House and the entities that have sat in those chairs. That's why we have not progressed prophetically and righteously. And we have all you false prophets and preachers and peddlers out there telling us how great this nation is and how great this president is and how great things are. You, sir, and you, ma'am, are a liar. And you owe the nation an apology. You owe them an apology for putting on people on your television programs. Is anybody here answer that phone? That's the devil calling 911. Is anybody here? He's calling. Ring, 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 ring. Is anybody with me today? On these television pro programs, bringing all these hot shots, bringing all these guys who wrote books, made movies, all these people promoting and saying, oh, righteousness is coming to our nation. How, how righteous do you feel right now? How righteous do our city streets look? How righteous do we look over in foreign entanglements around the world? We're no more righteous than Sodom and Gomorrah. But these things were said and we find no preachers with a backbone. We don't find your favorite preacher on the television saying anything. I looked for several days and I could not find the big shots. I'll just give it to you. Don't fall. I couldn't find the big shots. I couldn't find the big names. I couldn't find anybody to rebuke and to bring correction to the president of the United States. I couldn't find any of these guys. I couldn't find the evangelical council, the presidential council holding an emergency meeting and saying, please, please retract and repent of the things that you said. Please fall before the mercy of God. Oh, you may think it was sarcasm and you may think it was a joke, but God does not think it's a joke when you rise up with the drunkenness of power and pride and you mislead people who are simple-minded if you damned one person by the words of your mouth or your actions, you're guilty. This is why we warn all men, lest the blood be upon our hands. And if you're truly a Christian, you wouldn't even fathom those words. So my issue this morning of the Holy Ghost passion is this, that if we say we're a Christian nation, if we say this is a Christian president, if we say that we're headed towards righteousness, then why are we doing what we're doing and why are we allowing the things to be said like they're being said? And why isn't somebody with power and authority standing up and saying, the Lord rebuketh you? Take somebody from a small town of Livonia, Georgia to raise his voice and get up on a pedal stool and then say something and declare and decree the word of the Lord. Get up on a soapbox. I'm passionate about God today. You may think it's a joke and you may think it's sarcasm and you think it's something that is just on the side. Oh, it's just the personality of the person. Really? Really? Let me tell you something, if you were born again, you would never even think the thoughts that you were the chosen one. You would never even let somebody tell you that you were the king of Israel. If somebody ever told me that I was something that I'm not, I would sit them down and say, shut your mouth. And if I didn't have access to tell them to shut your mouth, I would go to God. Because I tell you every single time that anybody says anything about this preacher, whether good or bad, I give it to God. That's none of your business because that's my private life with God. But I share just a little bit with you. Anytime anybody writes me anything, anytime somebody shakes my hand, anytime somebody pats me on the back, I go to God and I say, God, it's yours. Amen. You ain't putting it on me. Because in him I live and move, I have my being. In him I have the ability to breathe and I have life in him. He holds me together. He holds my mind together. He holds my body together. He holds my heart together. King Herod learned about it in Acts chapter 12. Once people spoke 
of glorious things and prideful things. He never repented before a holy God, but he consumed them thoughts as wine. And he became drunk, and then he became rotten, and he died. Where are you, preacher? You counselor, where are you, Jim Baker? Where are you? You people in authority who have these people on television, who have the ear of the president, where are you? Where are you, Franklin Graham? Where are you? Now, if you come out in the next couple of days and you say you had a little meeting, I'll be glad for you. But as of right now, I've heard nothing out of you. And you're peddling all your programs. You're peddling all your shows to the people. And you're lying to them. Putting prophets up there telling him that he's bringing in righteousness. Come on, I can sit here and name names all day and make people as mad as a hornet. But I, that's not the point of this. The point is trying to bring to the church the reality that those that are in position are charlatans who are not telling you the truth. They're not telling you to prepare. And they're not rebuking people who say they're believers and bringing them into the position of correction. That's what a true father does. I find no glee. I find no joy. I did not rub my hands together saying, I can't wait to get into this house. To the contrary, I was fearful before an almighty God to open my mouth here. As I am every time I stand here. You may not think that. I may not show that. But believe me, I am. Because I will stand before an awesome God. And I don't want to be drunk with pride. I don't want to be drunk with the wine of the world. I want to stay pure with the wine of the Holy Ghost. I want to stay pure with the wine of the Lord, of the New Testament and his blood. I want to stay pure before his heart. They wouldn't have got the vessels. They wouldn't have got stolen stuff. And that is exactly what's happening today in our nation. You preachers, you're taking stolen stuff. You're taking the glory of God and you're giving it to a man. You're taking the vessels that were designed by God to bring him honor through worship and ritual, through relationship, through the priesthood. You took it and you gave it to an enemy. You stole it. And the king Belshazzar brought it out as a trophy. And that's what the American church has done with Donald J. Trump. You brought him out as a trophy. You brought him out to the church. You brought him out to the world as a trophy for Christianity. And you are no different than Belshazzar and Nebuchadnezzar. You're in the same lot. And if you shut me down or do whatever you want to do, I could give a rip. We'll find another way. Y'all come to my house and we'll hang out of the house and I'll preach the paint off the wall and watch Flo repaint it. <laughs> come on, somebody. Are you here today? It's about time somebody stood up and said, you know what, if you take every camera from me, if you take all of my ministry spots and advertisement, if you take my place at the table, that's okay. I cannot stand it any longer. I only have one king. His name is Jesus. We only have one Lord. His name is Jesus. We only have one God. His name is Jesus. We only have one chosen one. His name is Jesus. It would be different if you just shut your mouth about my king and just go along being narcissistic and talking about how wonderful you are and how awesome your hair is and how wonderful this is and how this and how that is. But you messed with my king today. And those of you who are offended by this message, you need to repent. Because everything I'm telling you is the truth. Everything I'm telling you ought to offend you concerning the lordship of our Savior and concerning the fact that we can't find men with a backbone that'll say anything and bring this man to a place of humility. Just try is all I'm asking. Give me a moment. Talk about one night with the king. Give me one moment with the king. I'll be as polite and professional as I possibly can, but I will rebuke him. By scripture. I would rebuke by the word of the Lord. I would rebuke with love. I would rebuke according to the standard of the word of God for the saving of the soul, not for the elevation of myself. Somebody said, why do you pray? I pray for the soul of this man. That's why I pray. 
I don't care about anything. I don't care about the economy. I don't care about none of that stuff. All that stuff will work itself out by the hand of God because God is moving his hand off of this nation. Is anybody still my friend in this house? I'm only at the beginning of my message because I'm only in verse 2. Do you realize how far I have to go? They took those things, those vessels, the things that were made for honor, and the wives and the princes and the entire staff. Listen to me. This was like having the whole staff together. This was like having the whole caucus together. This was like having the whole party together. This was like having the whole administration together. And everybody began to party, and they said, bring out the trophies that we stole. Let me tell you something, the house of God has been robbed. The house of God has been robbed by po political charlatans and warlocks and witches. The church is in deep trouble with God because we put a man above him. I understand to have authority, you must be under authority, and I understand we must have these things in our nation, but we must be responsible to call them out and not to look the other way. I don't care who sits in that seat. I was equally of a watchman under Obama as I is under this president. How you like that? As I is. That's how when you get mad, you just say stuff like that. You just go street. Somebody's going to write me and say, you don't speak proper. I know that. I don't look proper either. I'm not your normal preacher. Too much amen on this side over here. House divider, watch out. I'm only setting you up. Watch this verse 3. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was where? At Jerusalem, the holy place. And the king and his princess and his wives and his concubines drank in them. So they took the things that were sacred. They took the things that were set apart. They took the things that were holy, that were marked by God, and they brought them into the place and they filled it with their substance of pride. God doesn't need your help. God doesn't need the wine of the world to help him. God doesn't need your mixture of doctrines of humanism and political correctness. God doesn't need anybody's mixture or help to be placed in his cup. But they did. Just like we are today taking the vessels, the honor of God, and filling it with ourselves. We're filling it with our praises. We're filling it with our political future. So they brought them and they drank, verse 4, and they drank wine. And they praised the God of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone. So they got drunk with pride and they took the vessels and they began to drink even more. And as they began to drink from the vessels of God, that which was set aside for God, they began to sing praises unto the gods of gold and silver and stone and iron and wood. In other words, they began to sing praises unto the entities that they believe got them where they were, just like we are today. And just like narcissism is, when you stand up and say, I did, I did, I did, I did. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Well, that's just a TV persona. That's just the way the person is. Somebody told me the other day, that's just the way the person is. You know, they're a businessman, don't you know? Well, be a businessman and stop saying you're a Christian. Just go ahead and say, I was a thug and I was a part of the mafia and I was a part of corruption and I did all these things and I did grab private parts and I did own strip clubs and I did own casinos and I did do that and I did do this and I am that and I still do. I wish I had somebody that had any backbone with me today. When you begin to tell me that, then I'll say, okay, oh, yeah, I got you. I understand where you came from, homie. 
I got you, bro. I'm down with that. I'll pray for you accordingly. But when you come like a chameleon and you come like a thief and you come like a wolf in sheep's clothing, and when you try to do all these different things and make us believe that you're something that you're not, and then you get exposed for it, honey, I got something to say about it. And for those of you who just got here, I've been praying for a long time for exposure. You know that. Anybody that knows me and knows this house, I've been praying for exposure while everybody's praying for protection. I'm praying for exposure and we're getting it. I want it more. I want it all the way from the top to the bottom. I want it for every preacher. I want it for every politician. I want exposure to come because if you're hiding behind the cloak of false Christianity, I want you exposed. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Why? For the saving of your soul. That's all I care. That's all I care. I don't care about the glee factor. I don't care about the ha ha factor. Because I'm going to tell you, you know who gets the last laugh? God does. God does for every individual looking at me and every individual looking at, my, looking at me, looking at them. All of us stand before God and God gets the last laugh. Think you hide behind your political armor or your church armor, or your pulpit. God can remove this pulpit in an instant. But watch this. They drank wine. They praised the God of gold and of silver. That's what's happening today, talking about the economy. The economy's falling down around our feet, and we're praising it. I've been telling you for years the economy was not stable that the world was not stable. The world was telling the church that it wasn't stable, but the false preachers got up and the false prophets got up and began to say, everything's fine, everything's wonderful. Just wonderful, we're doing fine. Oh, what is that? Oh, don't worry about that. Big giant gaping hole. Water coming in with fishes. Because the Titanic sprung a leak. I told you most Christians are just gullible. You know why you're gullible? Because you don't study. You don't study history. You don't study trends. You don't study the Bible. You don't study what's happening outside of your four little walls of credit card life. Your little plastic banana world. The world is against America. And the Bible declares it comes against Babylon. The Bible declares that our enemies will take us over because we have made gold, silver, stone, and wood our gods. Why don't you try that during the tribulation? Why don't you, why don't you put some gold coins over your eyeballs? See if it can keep you from seeing things. Stuff a couple silver dollars in your ear hole. Are you, are you here? You better get some of those things in the short term. I'm not telling you not to have those things because I teach and preach that, and I do believe there's a season of reality of that. But I'm telling you, there's people who live by that and think that's going to be their escape. No, you better put your trust in the Lamb of God and the blood of Jesus Christ, and you better get on the ark of God and get off this Trump train and all these other political trains that are crashing. Man, I hope I made you mad by now because I'm really working it. Watch this. Verse 5, in the same hour, how long? Not long. Say, how long, Pastor, till all this comes apart? Comes apart? How long is it going to come to pass? How long are we going to see this? Not long. I'm not God. I don't know. And any prophet that tells you they know, they don't know. Because we don't know the totality of it all. We see in part, know in part, and prophesy in part till the whole comes. The whole's coming. But if you put pieces together, you can begin to see where we are. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. And I want you to take your old thinking cap like they taught you in elementary school. Put your thinking cap on, church. And think about everybody partying down. Think about your disco days. Think about your days, everybody partying in the trailer. Or in the woods. Or wherever you used to hang out and be silly. 
All of a sudden, everybody's partying down, so supporting Belshazzar. They just brought out the stolen vessels that came out of the house of God, and then fingers showed up. That shows you God is so awesome, he didn't need to show his hand. He gave you the fingers. He said, here, let me show you my fingers. And the fingers began to appear. Now they're partying down, they're drunk, and they're talking about all their great things. And the fingers of a man's hand rode over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw part of the hand that wrote. Now watch this, watch this again. I'm going to read it again, verse 5. In the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand and wrote against the candlestick. In other words, through the shadow of the reflection of the candlestick that was stolen, they couldn't even get their own light. You see, anytime you say that you're like God, anytime you say you're the king of Israel, anytime you say that you're the chosen one, you've stolen the light because you don't have no light. You don't have no ability. You don't have no reflection of your own. You must go to the source of all light, Amen. which is Christ. That's how foolish it is to brag of anything you've ever done without giving God the honor and the glory. Sarcasm or not, whatever you bunch of muppets want to label it as. You don't do that. But upon the shadow and the flexion, you ever made little puppet hands? Amen. The fingers began to come, and it was off the reflection of that which was stolen. Now, here's the amazing thing and why God wrote upon the wall. Because on the wall in the king's palace were written all the victories and the legends of the king. Upon the wall, they would talk about how many they killed and how many animals they brought to their kingdom and how many kingdoms they overtook. It was a running wall, a hall of fame, if you will. So God says, let me tell you something, Belshazzar, you narcissistic freak. I'll paraphrase him, by the way. It doesn't say that in the Hebrew. It's in the book of Benjamin, if you haven't read it yet. I'm sorry, I just, I'm, just, I'm not a theologian, I'm just a street preacher. But he said, hey, you freak, look here upon this wall and all the places where he had his tallies of victories and the horses and the carts and the chariots and the kings and chains, all these places with the legends of who he was, God took his finger and wrote on it. Mr. President, God will write on your narcissism. He will write on your false narrative of a history of being a liar and a prideful puppet of the enemy. He'll write upon your heart if you do not repent. And you that support in a false way. I'm not talking about innocent people. Hear me now. See, people misunderstand me when I speak certain ways. I'm not talking about innocence. I'm talking about the blatant, militant people who give people passes and push things, come on, for the greater good, and despite all the bad, they overlook it. That I have an issue with. Be a man and be transparent. You made a mistake, repent of it. Don't you double down on it and act like you ain't never done nothing, because that's pride, baby. Very easy to understand. My children can understand it. A little baby can understand it. And tell, us, tell us as Christians, oh, well, you know, he's just a brand new baby, just a brand new Christian. Well, someone ought to sit him down over his lap and give him a shellacking. Paula White, where's the shellacking? Oh, I almost said something I probably shouldn't say. But I'm going to tell you, it's rampant in our nation giving people passes. But God will judge. And so that finger came and it rode over all the accomplishments. When you exalt yourself above the knowledge of God, it erases everything you do. You don't get a pass. You don't get a get out of jail card unless you repent before a holy God. And I pray repentance comes. But history has proven that it's probably not, but that doesn't keep me from praying. It doesn't keep me from asking God to have mercy. Because I will pray for anybody until their last breath. I'm not going to give up. 
That's where their wall was. That's where their trophies were. And in the light of the candlestick of something that was stolen, the finger came. Verse 6, then the king's countenance was changed. Oh, I'd say so. Some of you all freak when you hear something outside your door at home. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? When something goes boom, bang, and it don't belong there. Could you imagine sitting there again, partying down, and fingers start showing up? No, I don't think I would like that. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we start seeing fingers in the White House? We start seeing fingers in churches. Bring it on, Jesus. We need it. We need the finger of God. We need the fiery fingers of God writing upon the walls of our life, writing upon the tablets of our hearts the truth. So we repent. This is no TV program, guys. This is not a reality show. This is real. And we're living this horror show. Well, I got a second win. I feel good. We could be here a while. Then the king's countenance was changed. And his thoughts troubled him, mm -hmm. so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. One, one historian said that his vertebrae was out of place. I like that version better. And in my notes, I put shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> I did. That's what we need that's when true repentance comes. When you see shake, rattle, and roll, when you see people that are just so terrified of a holy God, when you see people that recognize and realize what they've done is blasphemous towards heaven, then that's true repentance. Watch this, verse 7. The king cried, cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, and the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, whosoever shall read this written, this writing and show the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck. And he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. The story goes on and I will break it down verse 22 they went and they found Daniel aren't you glad for the remnant aren't you glad for the Daniel spirit that's still in the body of Christ of people women men old young that will say that's wrong buddy that have the spirit of Daniel that says let me interpret for you what was said because, again, many of the people in the church and in America, they are dumbed down and drunk just like Belshazzar and they can't see the truth. Verse 22, And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hast thou not humbled thine heart? Watch this. Though thou knewest all this. That's the problem with pride. You know better, but you won't fix it. You know the person is wrong. You know these preachers are wrong, but you're still watching their programs and sending them money. Still buying their books, trying to find some type of nugget, some type of truth out of it. When the Bible's right there before you and all of reality is right before you and what we're living. I'm not trying to fund money my way or bring people to this place. I'm just telling you the truth. I don't care where you go. As long as you go get truth and don't be deceived and don't be fooled. Watch this. But thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. Wait a minute. All he did was grab Papa's stuff, Grandpa's stuff, Peepaw's stuff. All he did was went and got stuff that was stolen. He didn't steal it. But he had part ownership of it because he never turned it back over to the temple. That is a generational curse. Because you never get rid of what you had in your past and you bring it into your future and you pass it on to others and it's happening to the church. We're under a generational curse. That's why we'll not see any signs of life until we repent. Truth of the matter is the church is in decline in America. Can you handle me five more minutes? Good. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee 
Thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines drink wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver, gold, and the brass of iron, of wood and stone, which see not nor hear nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is and whose are all thy ways thou hast not glorified. Do you see the sin? The sin was not glorifying God. The sin was taking the glory for yourself. This is the problem with our nation. This is the problem with our attitude. This is the problem with the church when we take the accomplishments of what we have and we boast upon ourselves that we did this and not God. And we give other gods the praise. Verse 24, then was the part of the hand sent from him and the writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, upspring. Upspring, which is really translated to prese, is really how it means. And it means dividers and divided, and also translates into Persia. Study it out yourself because it's an interesting study. And you will find the pronunciation in various ways. But he shows it and he brings it to understanding in verse 26. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, mean God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Take hell, thou art weighed in the balances and found it wanting. Per se, thy kingdom is divided and given to who? The Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a fine uh, chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be third ruler in the kingdom. And in that night, when Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain, and Darius, the Median, took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Very sad Indictment of truth, historical, prophetic, biblical truth of a man by the name of Belshazzar who took the glory of God and the things that were stolen out of the house of God and did not give God glory. And again as King Herod and again as Nebuchadnezzar and other figures throughout history have done, they took upon themselves lordship. They made themselves kings. They made themselves above God. And when they did, their kingdoms were taken from them, divided, and they died. America, the lady in black is here. America, we're preparing for our funeral. America, we're preparing for great change, biblical prophetic change that is coming to our nation and your Savior is not Donald Trump. Your Savior is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I pray that you pray for those that are found trapped in the power and poison of pride. And pray for the souls of men who defend those who are in the trap of pride. If you're watching me right now and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're part of that band of people who are full of pride and arrogance, I pray that you repent and give your heart to Jesus Christ today. There is an answer. His name is Jesus. There is a way and a life. His name is Jesus. You don't have to go that route today. If you're backslidden and you're far from God, for whatever the reasons are, whatever's going on in your life, he's there waiting. Just like he waited for the prodigal son, he's waiting for you to make that decision today. Ignited Church stands here praying for you and believing for your salvation. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. As inadequate as I feel, I pray that you take this smooth stone, like David's stone that he put in the slingshot, and he hurled it towards the forehead of Goliath. I pray that you would take this towards the Goliath of pride of this nation. It's not one person person. It's the spirit of our nation. And it is the spirit of humanity. We have turned our hearts away from you, God. Whether it's here in this nation, 
Pakistan, Russia, it does not matter. We stand in need of your grace. Father, help us in this hour. Speak to your prophets. Speak to your true watchmen. And I pray there will be a wholesale repentance upon those who are falsely lying to your people. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say amen. amen. I love you guys. I will see you Wednesday. Blessings.